Okay, so there are three things that I really want to achieve by doing this talk. Um, one of which is to increase awareness of the field that I'm working with. Another is to increase awareness of how English language learning can be achieved. Um, and to talk to people a little bit about the challenge in providing those services. So a little bit of jargon to begin with. There's ESL and EFL. There's a little bit of confusion about those. ESL is English as a second language. And EFL is English as a foreign language. They're used quite interchangeably in discussions about English language learning. Um, but there is a bit of a subtle difference. With EFL, it kind of comes down to context and you'll find foreign language learners in a foreign country, usually in educational context. With ESL instead, what you find is people in the UK potentially learning English, usually they're adults. I'm interested in ESL specifically, and particularly in the situation in Sheffield. It's a very multicultural community in Sheffield, where we've got a large number of ESL learners. Um, statistics and figures are published very frequently about um, how many learners there are and how much they're learning in order to show whether they're integrated or not. Now the population of Sheffield grew by 7.5% in between the last census and that was attributed to in-migration, uh, meaning that you've got a very diverse ethnic community which currently is 19.2% of the Sheffield population. That's a figure that's expected to continue to rise in the next decade, so what's really important is how the council um, is going to go about providing integrated skills like ESL learning with an enormous funding cut. So there's huge decrease in cuts and subsidised ESL classes that previously ran are now having to do things like reduce the numbers or begin to charge in order to meet the demand for services that they have. So what's happened is you've got community centres trying to plug that gap instead. And they aren't quite providing the same services. So what you had before was qualified teachers providing certificated attainment, the kind of figures that you need for proving levels of integration. And you've got conversational classes aimed at providing a much more community feel. On the surface, it looks like this could be a little bit of a disaster because you've got limited resources, large groups, mixed abilities, volunteer teachers and spaces that frankly just aren't designed for purpose. As a result, the skills being focused on are really rather different. They're not following a syllabus, so they're, spon they're responding to what learners are telling the teachers they need. And you've got a little bit more discussion and actual language practice as a result of almost a complete lack of resources. They're learning culturally and socially specific rules. And we don't know yet whether this is a good thing. Given the in-migration projected, what we need to do is look at the effect this is having on the change in isolation and integration for learners so that we can plan ahead to provide the support for people of that incoming input of migration. This leads us needing to find a little bit of evidence. Um, and I've been working in the community centre in Sheffield with first generation migrants, providing exactly the sort of support that I'm talking about. I've done interviews, I've done quite a lot of teaching, and I've built a corpus um, of materials based around that to help describe the experience of migrants in this area. Evidence from the successes of learning in this particular space that result from a change in the way ESL is provided from funded to charity need to come from the ground up, and not from people who are detached from those experiences. So this corpus is a really important resource. Learning is a very active and social process um, and so it needs to be connected to those experiences rather than from textbook um, and syllabus resources. If we do that, people are more likely to be much more successful learners um, of language and of culture. As a linguist, I believe that the best place to start is looking for social structuring patterns in conversations and active reflections from the learners on their experiences in that environment. An understanding of interculture in that space is the sort of thing that we should then be able to see. Interculture is a context-specific set of social rules um, that applies to every social situation. Um, and as people interact, they construct the social rules that apply to that situation. Identifying conventions and social rules in that sort of space will highlight the advantages and the disadvantages of the sort of things that are part of the experience of learning English in a community centre. The assumption is that this type of learning space is a much more socially supported springboard for people um, for the sake of integration. By finding out how people uh, negotiate this space, the problems that they face, the way that they talk about those problems, plus the advantages that people on the ground identify about learning in that space, can help us do two things. Make suggestions for the development of teaching practice um, in a response to needs, and determine what we are to migrants in the Sheffield community place so that we can assist them beyond that um, English language learning environment. Um, given the situation that councils in Sheffield are facing, it's very important that we take the opportunity to now to provide a needs-based solution to the level of migration we're facing and the lack of funding. And this is just another shout out to Rob who gave me the images.
a local illustrator, so do check out his website.